Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ziz Gushi with Double, Twilight Princess. What? With Twilight yeah. Princess Three Heart Run, accompanied by Twilight Princess Three Heart Run. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. It's cool. This I is, won't hate you for it. This is Doppel Snoplot, by the way. Not me, the one that's talking, but the other one. We're probably confusing everyone that's watching this. For the first so time. here's what it is: is we're actually the same person, and every time we do the trick, we just you know step out of a box. We cut off one of our fingers once because we had to make it convincing. Yeah. And Nikola Tesla, for some reason, is magic. Hmm. Slash. You know why he's magic? Glamrock. Yes. And then his son directed a sci-fi movie. So I, I remembered what I was going to talk about. Because last video I said there was something to talk about, but I didn't have enough time. And that is um, a couple of videos. It was like number 22. We talked about our video game pitches, and I was thinking, maybe we shouldn't have done that, because now someone might just take that and make video games out of it. I'm okay with that, as long as they get to play them. Um, I, I'm poor, so I would like to get paid for it. Mm. Well, we can just steal stuff, then. Okay, fine. <laughs> It'll be our hero tax. Also, why isn't Link freaking out when he sees her? Sees who? The one that fell from the sky previously in a pool of darkness. I don't know, and her other he... infernal spawn. Because he knew that was just a vision. Oh yeah, here's this animation that we see once now and then like once in the credits. And that's it. So, but then I realized I'm I'm kind of okay with it because, you know, the fact that I have definitive proof by uploading it to YouTube. So there's that, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it does become a game, even if they didn't actually see my video and make it that way, or your thing. Because for some reason a lot of the stuff that I think of gets turned into actual things. You should either have worse ideas that aren't worth making into games, or ideas so incredibly awesome that no one can think of them. Do that. Alright. Because I remember, like, it must have been like a decade ago now that I had this idea for, like, a story with a bunch of superheroes. Or more, like, people with powers, and they weren't, like, all superheroes. Like, there were some that would be criminals, and some that just wanted to be regular people. And then there was some of them working for the government, and there was all the stuff about how they came together, and all the intertwining stories, and then it happened on TV. And it was called Heroes. Lost. That was called Heroes. So that was my idea, and then a few years ago I had an idea about an action game. It'd be kind of like God of War, except the guy would use a bow staff instead of crazy rhythmic gymnastics. And But the thing that would separate this game from you know all the other action games is that there would be parts with variable gravity, like he might be able to control gravity, or he might be in an, or an area in which gravity would warp around a lot, or stuff like that. And... So that was my idea for that. But then they released Super Mario Galaxy. Which doesn't have a bow staff, but... Otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. It's not an action game, it's a platformer. Then again, Super Mario Galaxy is amazing, so I don't mind that they took that. If Heroes would have been good for more than one season, that would also be cool. Maybe people are extracting it from you when you're not looking. Maybe. Maybe there's some sort of shared dreams and they're unlocking my mind vaults. Like in... like in... Yu-Gi-Oh! Exactly. And no other movie or show or movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and... and Killian Murphy and Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Ellen Page and Ken Watanabe and Michael Caine and Tom Hardy, and Dilip Rao. Yu-Gi-Oh! had a really good cast. And Marion Cotillard. 
There were so many Oscar winners and nominees in that cast. Hey, back in your horse. Oh yeah, I do use the horse again, wow. <laughs> I completely forgot about the very next part of the game. <laughs> so I have to fight the Baldwin King again. It's okay, you can go back and delete if you, you saying that. If you look at him, you'll notice that one of his horns got sort of chipped off from the last fight. And he also has arm shields, so I can't joust him like I did before. Which is okay, because I can just shoot him in the face with a bow and arrow. This is, this is actually easier than the last one. He can still hit you after you do that, though, so you have to go around. This shot always looks really weird to me. Like when the key... I, I don't think physics works that way. How he falls off, but then the key goes like a million <laughs> feet in the air. And then it gets to Link, but then he catches it like three seconds after it gets to him. I mean, that helped. I, I guess. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't even know. So here's this part of the game where you have to escort quest the, the stagecoach. I don't really like it, not because it's an escort quest, because it's really hard for the stagecoach to die. You really have to, you know, not be paying attention at all. Because basically, people are going to shoot arrows at it, flaming arrows, and it's going to start on fire, and there's a little, um, a little gauge. And if you let the gauge fill up, it... The stagecoach dies. But you just use a boomerang to put the fire out. And as you put the fire out, it just empties the gauge. I think if the gauge is like three quarters full, the boomerang will only take off half of it, but it's... Keeping the stagecoach alive is not the problem here. The problem is that as you're going, there's going to be cargo rocks. Those things that you think are owls, but they're not owls. Um... You see on the map in the little corner, there's still two fields to go. Well, towards the end of each field, there's going to be a Kargrog that swoops in and drops a bomb right in front of the horse, and it's going to scare it, and then the horse is just going to start going in circles. You see there's a Kargrog right there. Up, like, by the Midna face. Right there. And I think I tried shooting it, but nothing happened. Yeah, that is not an owl. I don't know what you're talking about. So yeah, I, I failed at this part. I was gonna drop the bomb right about now. And oof! So now that horse is gonna go run around the entire field. And basically what you gotta do is hit the cargo rock with the bomb or with the boomerang. Like right there. So that the bomb explodes in its talons and then it won't drop it in front of the horse. But the controls are just really weird during this part. I don't quite like. Oh, by the way, there's a tree that I just passed that had a piece of heart in it that you could see. Of course, I don't care about that, but it's there. So, oh no, I have to hit the bomb again. Right there. Yeah. There's a tree there. <laughs> yeah. I... pretty... I, I did not do well at this part. I think I run into like the wall next to one of the gates like five times, and then these guys on the on the bulbos with the bow and arrows just kept running around me and stuff. It's, it was humorous, but not fun to play. <laughs> did I just jump over the bulbo? I think I did, or my horse did, and then because I'm so far back, I can't hit the, the card rock. So I have to go around this field, too. I don't think hitting it with a bow and arrow works. But I only, uh... This is a situation where flaming arrows are helpful. Oh, yeah. I only had to go around each field twice, so I kept this this attempt because 
It's not horrible. If anything, it shows you what happens if you fail. <laughs> I'm trying to get off the horse right now, but I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is you clumsy. The... Well, I need that. Twice in a row. Should we just take 10? Well, you can't take 10 because they're shooting at you.